Hey guys, Mike with Long Range with the Lilies. Uh, here to talk to you a little bit about something that's not really talked about much, and that is grinding and the importance of being a grinder. Um, I had a conversation with a good buddy of mine, Nate. Nate come, grew up in the um, professional golf world. Um, he played competitively at a very high level. Uh, he was a teaching pro for a long time, and now he runs a major golf resort. Um, and we were having a discussion about golf and how the average handicap has not changed in the past 50 years. Uh, for those of you that don't know, golf is a very challenging mental sport. Um, and there's a lot of analogies between golf and precision rifle shooting. For those of you that are tuning in for a precision rifle shooting um, just hang on, I'll get there. Um, I'll tie it all in it here in a little bit. So back to the National Handicap in Golf. Uh, so the average golfer who plays somewhat regularly, the average handicap is a 99. They just barely break 100. Par is typically right around 72, depending on the course you're playing. Um, and we were having this discussion because despite the advances in technology, um, the golf ball goes further, uh, golf clubs, if you <laughs> listen to the advertisement, are like five million times more forgiving than they've ever been. Um, you know, there's been all these incredible leaps in teaching and technique and understanding the golf swing and what it takes to hit the golf ball well. Uh, you know, video teaching, you know, you, there's access to instruction like there's never been before, either in person or online. When you add up all these things, you would think that the average golfer is getting so much better and that the, the average handicap would go down, um, but it's just not. And so we were having this conversation about like, why is that? Why, why, is, why aren't people getting better? Um, and this led to a conversation. And the reason that we came up with is grinding. Um, most people don't like to grind. They don't like to do things that are unpleasant or uncomfortable or that don't make them feel good about themselves. Um, and this really manifests itself in sports like golf or precision shooting for that matter. Um, these are both sports that are not, you know, intrinsically just rewarding and they're going to make you feel great about yourself all the time. Um, anybody who's gone out and shot in 40, 50 miles an hour wind and is just left be feeling just beat up like, Jesus, I don't even know how to shoot or I can't find the targets or whatever understands where I'm coming from. It's the same thing with golf. Um, golf is probably, in my mind, the most mentally challenging game out there. Uh, precision rifle is hard. Don't get me wrong. But golf is incredibly hard. Um, there's a mental demand of staying in the moment that is just impossible to relate to somebody. Um, I did not realize how hard golf was until I became a better golfer. Um, so, you know, back to grinding, you know, what it takes to be good at golf, you know, the, the average golf handicap is a 99. That's the majority of your population. The level of people that break 80 is somewhere less than 10%, um, is about what we're coming up with. And then the, the guys that break par, you know, 72, the, the sub par golfers, the pros, the whatever you want to call it, it's less than 1%, guys. Um, you know, and how does that apply to precision rifle shooting? Well, it's the same thing. Uh, anybody who's looked at a score sheet, the way the score sheet breaks down is, is typically, uh, unless you're in a meatball match, uh, you'll have... The top three, four, five guys are really tight. And then, you know, six through 10, there's kind of an even spread. 10 through 15, there's kind of a, a big clump there. And then usually there's just this massive fall off down to the middle of the field uh, and then down. And what separates those people? Um, well, I classify myself in that like, Typically top 20 to top 10 is where I kind of exist, uh, working on getting better, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Occasionally I'll bump up like I did last year. I had a, you know, uh, a fourth place at a national match, a tie for fourth and stuff like that. But, you know, typically that 10 to 20 is where I exist. And every time I shoot, uh, for example, I've been privileged enough to shoot with Morgan King a couple times now, seeing the gap in ability and just performance that exists between him who's winning 
most of the matches he shows up at now in me is, is fairly large. There's some real work I got to do there to close that gap and I'm working on it. And what it's going to take to get there is grinding. So what is grinding? Um, grinding is going out and doing the work that you don't want to do. It's that dirty, um, I don't want to do this. It's boring. It's monotonous. Uh, in current ammo times, if we're relating it to shooting, it's you know expensive, but it's doing what you need to do to get better, regardless of how fun it is. Nobody wants to go out and in, do dry firing for half an hour. Nobody wants to do it for an hour. It's not fun, guys. Like it's it's not rewarding at all, but it's that kind of stuff that makes you better as long as that practice is purposeful. Um, you know, when you talk to like a phenom like Allison Zane, I've had a couple of conversations with her. I don't know her super well. Um, I know her and her dad are great people and, uh, and I'm always um, happy to be around them, but I've talked to her a little bit and I know she dry fires a ton despite being busy and everything else. She dry fires all the time. Uh, that's that grinding mentality that makes her successful. Is dry firing the key to her success? I, I don't know. I am not good enough to say that. I'm not an instructor. But I will say what is critical to her success is her ability to grind and do the work and the passion to know, okay, I don't want to do this. I'd rather be doing un other fun things, but I need to do this to maintain my standard of performance. So that's what I'm going to do. And that is the mental leap that a lot of people are un unwilling to um, to make. You know, uh, it involves sacrifice. You know, maybe I don't go hang out with my friends. Maybe I don't don't go do this other fun thing. Um, but that's what it takes. Maybe it involves if fitness is the thing that holds you back. Well, maybe it involves working out. Maybe it involves cleaning up your diet. Maybe it involves. <laughs> Like for me, I need to improve my flexibility so I don't cramp up or hurt when I get in those tiny little um, positions between prone and low kneeling that are so problematic for me. Um, but that's just me. That's just the things that I need to work on. Um, so how does, you know, all this come together and, and apply to shooting? Well, there's lots of people that get into shooting for different reasons, right? Most of us try it out, we get curious, and either we get bit by the bug or we don't like it, we don't like the initial investment, whatever, and we go the other way. Those of us that get by the, bit by the bug and we really like it, tend to shoot up to a certain level and then there's kind of a plateau there. And at that plateau, that's what dictates where you go from there. Uh, either you start grinding, you start seeking instruction, you start seeking ways to get better, and you break through that plateau and rise, or you stay there and you're one of those guys, man, I just do it because I enjoy hanging out with my friends. I enjoy it because I love it or I enjoy it, but you know, I'm not willing to invest or to do that, that amount of effort. And that's fine, um, but you are gonna stay at that level or decline even a little bit. Again, I'm not saying guys, if you're not in it to win it, then you're wrong. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm talking to the guys that wanna get better, that wanna achieve that next level. It's gonna take some grinding. Um, so let me caveat that with, I say all this grinding and practice and everything else with some things that are just implied. One, that you have a solid basis of fundamentals and you've received quality instruction, whether that's from a, a good mentor or through formalized courses or, you know, anything like that. If you don't have that solid foundation to build off of, you're kind of wasting your time. And if you start grinding and practicing and sending a ton of rounds down range, you might be ingraining bad habits and you might be setting yourself back. So, you know, I, all this is predicated on that you have achieved a certain standard of performance and, and you're going to um, build off of that with your grinding and not make yourself worse. So, you know, you start grinding, you start practicing, you're going to rise up. And after that, guys, there's going to be plateaus if not even setbacks. I know I received, I had a setback earlier this year. It took a ton of work for me to kind of climb back out of it just to get back to where I was. But I do feel like I'm on an upward trajectory and I'm going to be better than I was last year because I fought through that valley, that dip in performance, and now I'm on my way back up. And that's mostly through grinding. I am not a naturally talented shooter. I cannot put down my rifle pick it back up a few months later and just 
start killing it again. I am a grinder. I have to go out and be people with hard work, perseverance, and determination. Um, that's just who I am. You know, there are guys out there that can pick up a rifle, uh, learn some fundamentals, and then carry that over to competition and just crush it out there. Those natural phenoms, they, they do exist. They are out there. But they're few and far between. And I will say that as the sport has gotten better, natural talents alone is not going to be enough to get you there anymore. Everybody who's at the top is not only good, but they're also putting in the work. If you see a guy who's continuously in the top five at national matches, that dude is not only good, but he's putting in the work. I promise, I guarantee it, I don't know anybody out there who doesn't work hard at their craft that continuously win matches. You know, they may tell you, oh, I don't practice, I only practice at matches, um, but they're shooting so many matches that they're, that is their practice. Um, so don't get that twisted. So back to um, shooting and grinding and how it applies and to, to wrap everything up, um, grinding is unpleasant. That's why it's called grinding. It's, it's an unpleasant thing, um, but it is necessary for growth. You cannot expect results for the work you didn't do. And that is one of the things that I see out there that mentally crushes dudes the most. They get out, they were like, man, I had a good match two matches ago and I haven't touched a rifle since, you know, I was top 20 and now I came out and I came in 50th. Well, yeah, that happens, you know, and if you didn't put in the work, the odds of it happening are higher. So get out there, put in the work, and then you can start thinking about results. If you focus on the process, the results will come and the process is practice and grinding. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, the other thing that, the last thing I um, almost forgot that I do wanna cover on is grinding is not only physical practice, grinding is also about mental toughness and knowing that there's gonna be peaks and valleys and having the mental determination to kind of suffer through those and the resilience to come out the other side. Um, again, I touched on it earlier. Last year, I was having a great year, finished with four top tens in a row. Went on a military deployment, didn't touch a, a rifle, a competition rifle, um, didn't have access really to sniper rifles or anything like that to practice on. I know, you know, it's possible to be in the military and not shoot and have access to sniper rifles all the time, which is kind of contrary to a public internet theory out there. But anyway, it's just not my job. I'm not a sniper. Um, came back and had a real bad performance, uh, a valley of performance and I attribute most of that to trying to go match to match to match to match without putting in any of the work and the grinding in between and trying to solve problems at matches is not a good way to finish well at matches uh, pro tip or semi pro tip or marksman or whatever classification I am uh, it's a little murky out there anyway um, sorry to go on a rambling kind of tangent there what I'm trying to say is Get out there, put in the work, grind it out, and you will see your results. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe, share it with your buddies. Um, love to have this conversation. Uh, hit me up in the comments below or stop me at a match if you want to talk about grinding. Uh, if you want to talk about being a phenom, go talk to somebody else because I'm not that way. <laughs> I got to earn every point I get out there. Anyway, guys, we'll see you out there. Bye.